Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. This is the 13th of February. And actually only a few updates this week, but some of them are really cool. As always, this is useful. Please go ahead and like, subscribe, comment and share and hit that bell icon to get notified of new updates. As always, I've got the chapters down the bottom so you can jump to specific updates if there's a particular one you are interested in. New videos this week. So one big AZ500 study cram, three hours are just focused on all the key theory around that AZ500 exam. And of course we did have our 100,000 subscriber Ask Me Anything session. You can go back and watch if you want. So onto the new features, AKS cluster persistent volume backup. Remember with Kubernetes, I can have pods get access to durable storage. I have a persistent volume claim that maps to a persistent volume that's enabled by some provider, um, Azure Managed Disks, Azure Files, Azure NetApp Files. So what I can now do is through Azure Backup is I can actually back up and restore those persistent volumes. Now I could not only recover them, I could actually now use that to clone or replicate to other clusters so I can restore to the cluster it's backed up from or to a different cluster. Azure Site Recovery now has 15 day recovery points. This has gone from what was 72 hour limit to 15 days. Now, if I think about a normal operational recovery, the 72 hours is probably all I would ever need. I just need to go back maybe a, a few hours uh, a day. But that longer period might be more useful in maybe a ransomware type attack, where maybe I don't notice there's been a compromise for a few days. So I need to go back further than that. So now I can configure this up to 15 days. Now, the actual retention will vary. I think for the first two hours, you have these five minute increments of recovery points. Then if it's one day, I get one per hour. If it's two to seven days, it's one every two hours. And in past seven days, so eight to 15 days, it's one every four hours is retained. So it, it does change, they get less frequent retention as I move out and out through the history. But now I can go and configure what is that retention period I actually want. Azure Bastion now has file transfer as well in preview. Remember, Azure Bastion, there's different SKUs. This is talking about the standard SKU, not the basic SKU. And we have the ability to use the native client now. So I don't only go through the portal, I can through the Azure CLI initiate a connection that will fire off the native client. I can do the AZ Network Bastion and then RDP uh, Tunnel. So now once I've used that native client for SSH and RDP, I can now actually upload files too. If I'm using RDP, it's just regular copy paste. If I'm using SSH, I establish the tunnel, and then I use the SCP command to actually upload content. And if I'm using RDP, I can also download content from that target virtual machine. Again, just using that regular copy paste. So that's now a preview capability. And then the only other update, miscellaneous, is about Azure AD. And it's this new cross-tenant access settings. And this is actually huge. So if we actually go and take a quick look at this for a second. This is all about the idea that we have external accounts. So I think about B2B, and it's maybe people from my organization getting access to a resource that's trusting another Azure AD tenant or people from other Azure AD tenants being given access to things in my um, subscriptions. What I can now do is if we go and have a little look, if I go to my external identities, we see this new, in preview, cross-tenant access settings. I can now configure different settings for specific organizations and also I can have some default settings. So I can configure default settings for both inbound and outbound. So inbound is, hey, people coming from other tenants that I'm giving access to resources, things that trust my tenant. Outbound is, hey, people from my tenant 
being given permission to trust resources that trust a different Azure AD tenant. So I can do that just in general default, or again, I can have specific settings for a specific tenant. So here, for example, I've got different settings for a tenant on board to azure.com that's different from the regular default settings. And what I can do for these, if we go and have a look, for the B2B collaboration, I've left the default. Hey, I can allow access for external, I can allow access to all applications, but I could tweak that if I wanted to, I could customize those settings, but it's this trust setting. This is really powerful. So what I could now do is any combination, if someone has performed MFA in their home tenant, I can now trust that. Whereas today I can't. Without this, I would have to make them re-register for MFA in my tenant and re-go through an MFA, a strong authentication. I don't trust their statement that, hey, I've already done a strong authentication. Well, I can now say, hey, I'm gonna trust that. I could trust compliant devices. I could trust a hybrid Azure AD join status. So in my conditional access policies in my organization, rather than now forcing something to happen again, I can use those claims from their home tenant as part of my conditions. So now again, I can do that on a per tenant. So I might have different settings for a particular organization I work with a lot. I have confidence in them. I'm good with trusting their MFA and their hybrid status, etc. And then I can have other settings by default to control, hey, um, which types of collaboration I want particular applications. So it just gives me a lot of nice control over that. Again, it's preview today, but go and have a look and, and start playing around with that. And that was it. So those are the updates for this week. As always, I hope that was useful. And until the next video, take care.